the problem with the dark zone is there's organisms running around that are alive yeah. and healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, that kind of flies in the face of this um, rule of thumb here on planet Earth that everything uh, is kept alive by the sun. Right. Right? If there's no light whatsoever, how are animals in the dark zone allowed to live? Food chain. Which I guess still, I mean, that, she didn't really draw the, the conclusion that uh, the food chain <laughs> depends on the sun. But I guess that's what it means, right? Right. Like the, the sun still comes into play, just not deep down within there. Right. They get the, um, they benefit from photosynthesis distally rather than proximally. Wow. Look at you, fancy boy. Uh, so, you know, if there's going to, how do you get food deep down in the cave? One way is, and I didn't even consider this, is by flooding. Right. When the waters rise, it'll just wash things in there that the animals can eat. Right, and it's a, it's rather than a food chain. I mean, a food chain is actually a good way to describe it. But it's almost like a food bucket brigade. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, you have you have food maybe washed in, uh-huh. um, leaves, twigs, sticks, right. or actual food. Yeah. Um, maybe a a dead raccoon. Mm-hmm. Um, and then things feast on it in the entrance zone, right? Right. And then things that are, things that are living in the twilight zone can feast on those things that ate it in the entrance zone. Right. And then it just kind of goes and goes until you finally reach the dark zone, and then they're eating, you know, maybe four times removed what washed into right. the, the entrance zone. Right. Right? Yeah. Well, and that's just one way it gets in washing. Um, another way is your favorite thing, guano. Right. Bat poop. Which is a really good fertilizer. Is it? Yeah. That You can usually buy it at um, nurseries. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Well, there's lots of it because I've seen the specials where there's like mounds, like mountains of bat poop. Because mm-hmm. they're there for months on end, yeah. right? Hibernating. Uh-huh. And they're all just pooping. That's all they're doing, <laughs> eating and pooping. Yeah, and it stinks too. Oh, I bet. Um, you bat- can't eat it right away though, isn't that right? Or like they can't just feed on the poop initially, didn't it have to decompose? Well, it depends. You've got decomposers, oh, yeah, microorganisms yeah, sure. that are actually eating the poop. Right. So bat guano is a food source for these these uh, organisms at the very bottom of the um, biospeleology food bucket brigade, right? The unsung heroes, if yeah. you will. So they, they decompose it. They break it down for themselves, turn it into food themselves, but they're right. also leaving nutrients as byproducts. And these decomposers and microorganisms make make up food for slightly larger organisms. Right. Right? Like um, millipedes and centipedes and other small insects, right? Right. And then it just kind of goes up from up t- to the apex, which is the predators. Yeah, it's a food pyramid, essentially. W- which really all, all ecosystems are. Yeah, I guess so. At the top, you have predators, and there's going to be the f- smaller, well, the larger the animal, the fewer there are of them. You know, if you compare sharks to plankton, right? There's a lot more plankton than sharks in the ocean. Yeah, good point. Uh, one of the things that really creeped me out, and this one's going to keep me awake tonight: uh, the <laughs> insects get bigger and bigger, centipedes, spiders, salamanders, and then uh, apparently some centipedes are so big that they can feed on bats. Right. That's what I want to see. I do too, actually, and. It's kind of like why mess around with guano and wait for the whole food chain thing to happen. Right. Just go right to the source and eat the bat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The, the heck of a centipede. That's, yeah. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. 